Welcome back to Dread the Unsolved. In the first part of our look at the death of Kendrick Johnson, we talked about how a talented high school athlete was found deceased upside down in a rolled up gym mat. After an investigation, an exhumation, and allegations of mortuary misconduct, the case continued into its second year. I encourage you to watch the first episode to understand this episode. Also, for those coming from part one and new viewers, welcome to Dread the Unsolved. October 31st, 2013, Halloween. U.S. Attorney Michael Moore announces an FBI investigation into the death of Kendrick K.J. Johnson. November 2013, under a judge's order, 290 hours of surveillance video from the Lowndes School is released to the public under a judge's order. Numerous analysts pour over the footage watching the final day of Kendrick Johnson's life. Startlingly, Many noticed chunks of missing time in the footage, as if it had been manipulated. Three hours and 15 minutes were found missing from different cameras. The Johnson family attorneys were quick to call the missing footage an attempt at a cover-up. In a piece for the Valdosta Daily Times, writers Adam Floyd and Brandon Powers explain that the six footage servers in the Lowndes County Schools do not sync with each other, leading to extreme time differences between each server. Quote, not having that time sync capability can lead to extreme time differences between the servers. For example, when one camera captures what is happening at noon, another camera on a separate server could capture the same moment but timestamp it as 12.10 p.m. End quote. Even with fierce debate over the surveillance footage, all that is captured is KJ walking through the halls of Lowndes High School. He doesn't appear to be followed, nor does he appear to be following anyone. He enters the gym, and that's it. There was no camera pointed at the area at the back of the gym where Kendrick's body would later be found. January 2014 One year has passed since the death of Kendrick Johnson. March 19th, 2014 A confession is made via email claiming that a student at Lowndes High School, along with three others, killed KJ. A few days later, it will be found that the confession was a hoax. July 29th, 2014. The Johnson family sues Lowndes County school officials for the wrongful death of KJ. They claim a pattern of abuse against KJ by an unidentified student stretching back to a fight on a school bus the year before KJ's death. The suit did not identify a suspect, but they alleged that the defendants were negligent and violated Johnson's constitutional right to equal protection based on race. August 28, 2014 Frederick Rosen, writing for Ebony Magazine and Ebony.com, is sued for $5 million for slander and libel. Rosen had been writing extensively about the KJ case, and implicated two students, the sons of an FBI agent, in the death of KJ. This stems from a confrontation that occurred between a student and KJ on a bus the year before his death. After the confrontation, the older brother of the student involved in the fight allegedly told KJ, this isn't over. Theorists still contend that the FBI agent father of these two students facilitated a cover-up of the murder of Kendrick Johnson. This has never been proven, and the pieces written by Rosen were removed from Ebony. Rosen's source was an anonymous email sent to the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. January 2015. The Johnson family files a $100 million lawsuit against 38 individuals over what they believe is a conspiracy to cover up the murder of their son. November 2015. The U.S. Attorney's investigation into the case continues, and the Department of Justice files a stay in the $100 million civil case. They stated that they believe discovery would have a, quote, chilling effect on the federal investigation. This stay was denied, and the Johnson family drops their case, wanting to refile after the conclusion of the investigation. 
they are immediately sued for almost $2 million for defamation and lawyer fees. June 20th, 2016. Over three years after the death of Kendrick Johnson, the Justice Department is finally prepared to present their findings in the case. They would not be moving forward with any charges. Though the story seems to be over, it's not even close. Next week, we'll be dropping into an unprecedented third part of this series. I will leave you this time with a quote from the Justice Department regarding their investigation. Quote, after extensive investigation into this tragic event, federal investigators determined that there is insufficient evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that someone or some group of people willfully violated Kendrick Johnson's civil rights or committed any other prosecutable federal crime. If you like this content, consider liking and subscribing. It helps. You can find me on Twitter at DreadUnsolved, along with TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for watching.